fear the world. It has gone mad. Hello everybody and welcome to Darkest Dungeon 2. It is finally here and we are ready, jumping on in. Following on from our Darkest Dungeon 1 series, I've just, I was so excited to see this game come out in early access, I just knew that I had to play it on the channel as soon as possible. In case you didn't know, within the Darkest Dungeon 1 series we had, we actually stuck with a very heavy role-playing aspect, where viewers would write backstories for characters, as well as writing diaries each week to progress those characters' stories throughout the long campaign. In this game, we're going to be doing something very similar, and you may be wondering, for any of you that know the gameplay of Darkest Dungeon 2 versus the first, the, the runs are actually much shorter rather than one long campaign, so sticking with a narrative and building up a sort of role-playing backstory is more difficult because the characters are going to be dying more often, and you're not going to be playing with the same people the whole time like you would be in Darkest Dungeon 1. We've actually found out a really interesting way to work around this. Someone in my Discord called EBG actually came up with a great idea of having time cycles, sort of time loops that the characters we play as are stuck in. So within each run, they play through and whether win or lose when they die, they will come back to the start of the loop. It will be the same characters as the previous, but they have been reset back to the crossroads once again to head forward and try and progress further in their next life and they're going to be trying to figure out along the way what's going on they're going to be picking up small clues and inklings of the loop themselves and becoming more and more aware as time goes on as well as trying to just beat darkest dungeon and win so I think that's a really, really interesting idea uh, by EBG as sort of the backstory for how this series is going to work and how we will continue a narrative with the characters we are playing as. He actually prepared a nice little uh, sort of backstory and introduction to this idea, so I'm going to read that now. A lone carriage stands underneath the old weathered sign of the crossroads. Its half-rotten wooden planks show the ways to lands far too dangerous to tread anymore. Several lone strangers walk from within the blinding darkness, driven by their own motives and hardships. They have done it before, all of them. They are so different, yet so full of regret. Driven to the light shining on the back end of the mysterious abandoned transport. They do not know who it belongs to, yet the strange white light beckons them. It makes them feel something they have not felt in a long time. Oh, and when they arrive, all four of them, again, they find supplies left untouched. Weapons, all they would ever need for a, to last a long journey. And they find a man laying dead on the ground, a pistol in his withered hand, and a letter placed beside him. A red seal of the family once belonged to the old of Hamlet. A small city not too far from here. The source of the ruin those strangers had come to know so intimately. Something compels one of them to read it. They feel as if they've done so before for some reason, and they are going to do it again. The letter says... <clears throat> Chaos and madness has ruled the world, unbridled horrors terrorizing every inch of its godforsaken lands. War has consumed most of it with its vile clutches, averting their eyes to the true enemy crawling from within the very shadows underneath their feet. Madness and fanaticism has clouded their vision, turning a man to a monster and monster to man, turning the devil into saint and saints into nothing. But it was not always this way. I have lived within its origin, the origin of the grand plague that has conquered this world with its unseen tendrils. I have watched its every minion spread. I have tried to stop it. I have failed. I have failed everyone. My town, my people, the world. And the ruin has found you because of me. For that, I cannot remain in this world for long. The world is conquered by madness, but must not remain this way for long, for it truly has little time left, unless someone does something about it. You think me mad. You think it's impossible. If you read this, then perhaps it's not as mad as you think it is. If you find this carriage, if you discover what I've left behind, please, I beg of you, make it right. Whoever you may be, I beg of you, do not abandon this last light of hope. Face the horrors. Slay all those who stand in your way. Find the source, the true source, no matter how many times it takes you. Bring this well back from the brink. I give you all I had. For this, as I leave everything in your hands, whoever you may be. With my undying sincerest thanks, Will June. 
incredible writing there by EBG. I'm so impressed with what people have come up with here. And this story is just going to allow us to really get creative with this series and really build up something special. I really didn't expect to be able to roleplay to the same sort of degree that we were able to in Darkest Dungeon 1 with this series, but I'm so grateful that uh, we found a way to do so and that you guys are, are interested in doing so. It's going to be really fun. So we are going to be getting straight in. As you can see, I am currently level one. I've reset my profile. It may say continue run, but basically it's just going to end the run that I was on last. But my profile has been reset. Do not worry. So let's jump in and, uh, and start off this amazing series on this amazing game. I'm just so excited to get this started with the characters that we have going forward. It's going to be so fun. It's going to be really, really interesting. Do not despair. There is nobility in the attempt. As you can see. <laughs> That's how we started off. But anyways, let's progress forward. And as you can see, within Darkest Dungeon the 2... The horror, it would seem. There's nothing at all. It's not quite the same as it used to be. Here we are. Your sanctum. Adrift in this bituminous nightmare. Oh, this is going to be great. Let's uh, replay the cinematic here. My friend. Our calculations were correct. The ephemeral equation is unbalanced. The Earth spins on a strange and terrifying new axis. And everywhere, unbridled consequence. The world is a wasteland of failures past. And yet, you must ride out into it. Unafraid. Take this. It is hope. The very last of it. It is yours now. You were bold once. Be bold once more. Free yourself from this suffocating stillness. Fix your gaze on the horizon. And face the fearsome truth of the darkest dungeon. God damn, I'm so ready. I'm so ready. Now, I will say, uh, before we sort of jump in and start this off, I have played this game a little bit in preparation for this series, just to make sure that I'm not completely unaware of what's going on. So, there is going to be some tutorials, probably, I can't, I don't remember if I turned them off or not, I, I don't think I did. Uh, so, there's going to be some tutorials, but I'm going to kind of be glossing over some of them and going into detail with a few other things. But um, I won't be sort of tutorializing this whole series, uh, just because I want to make sure we can actually build up a story and get into this. So... We'll be able to see this, but we don't have to read all of these. Um, but anyways, as I, as I was saying, Darkest Dungeon 2 is very different. Instead of um, having a hamlet in which we control and go out into adventures, we control the stagecoach and we travel from the here to there, roads. going to the crossroads. Between places. Here we are at the crossroads. And here is our crew. I am excited to, uh, I'm excited to get into these guys here. This is... Uh, the first four people that we have, and we can actually go and rename these appropriately. So just one moment. There we go. And we start with Courtney. This is our Plague Doctor. And Courtney, like I said, as the others, these will be our characters and we'll be with them for a long time. These guys will be progressing through each run within their cycle, trying to progress forward. But this, as I said, is Courtney, a backstory written by T.E.A. Courtney, for the longest time, had always had a dream, one that she'd kept to herself. Even as a young girl, she had always acted with purpose, 
certain boldness that she was certain would carry her further than those around her. For she had always seen the world as hers, all its beauty and grandeur, stories and experience, from the serene to the chaotic, it was there for her taking. For her to see and to touch, for her to control, yet all of it was permented with some taint, a weighted cloud that hung over her world, weighted upon the minds of the living, something that would bring ruin to her and everyone around her. Death, the inevitable, inexcertible, the end of body and mind. This is what motivated her to delve into the study of medicine, the only known thing that could delay it. Of course, I had never found a way to prevent it or reverse it, so her first real goal, first step towards her dream was realised. She must discover what made life and what caused death to snuff it out. She must find a way to bring it back or prevent its insurance. She excelled in her studies, always taking notes and scoring the highest out of all the students, always at the top of her class. She went further than this. Many of her professor's conclusions were met with a heated rebuttal from Courtney as her own knowledge began to reach beyond the scope of her own teachers and experts in their field. This was due to some, uh, some wild and something sometimes dangerous extracurricular activities of hers, experiments with life and death. Surely, but, sh um, but surely inching her closer to her conclusions in her search, she was just missing one thing. Her studies of microbiology and animals taught her much, but she needed a human specimen, which was not so easily acquired but she would, do, uh, she would do what she must. Years later, Courtney would lift a vial of strange fluid to the light, inspecting it closely. Shut away in her personal laboratory, she continued her morally ambiguous experiments. She had a supply coming from a shady benefactor, one which she used to further her experiments far beyond what she could achieve during her time in the academy. In the dark of night, a crash could be heard from down the hall. Courtney paused, afraid and unsure, but she suspected the worst, an intruder. Panicked slightly, she grabbed for her knife, but it was too late. As the door to her lab came crashing down, she stared down the gang of intruders. She realized her past at the academy finally caught up with her. She awoke in a pla uh, place in a blanket in darkness, soaked in a foul-smelling ichor. She shakily got to her feet and peered into the black. Far ahead, she could see something, a lantern light atop a sign at the crossroads. What a wonderful backstory there. I'm super impressed with uh, the writing skills of you guys. It just, it all comes together so naturally and it really builds up the character of who we're playing as. We get a feel for their motivations, who they are, what they know and why they're here. So I'm, I'm really happy to have these backstories built up and be able to progress with them throughout this series. Next up we have Jane, our grave robber. And this is a backstory written by me. Jane had always been a calm soul, much like any married woman of the time. She spent most of her days looking after the house, as well as generally helping with the upkeep of the small village she had lived in since being a child. Nevada, her husband, was also from this village. The two had grown up together and grew close after a raid in their early teens left them, left them both orphaned. With nowhere else to turn, the two decided to live together. As they grew older and married, Nevada took a job as a farmhand tending to Jane's every need, but after about five years or so of this, he got bored and uninterested with the relentless cycle of life. He looked for adventure, but this led him to falling in with the wrong crowd, a bunch of mercenaries, bounty hunters and thugs that would often pass through the village and paint the town red, in a much more literal sense than any of the residents would prefer. They drank at the Rat Tail Tavern, the only inn in the village that had been known far and wide for its selection of hired hits. Jane grew tired of the late nights, loud noises, and unexpl unexplained bloodstains on Nevada's clothes. And at this point, she knew it was only a matter of time before she became just another unexplained bloodstain. She thought of ways she could deal with it. Maybe just leave altogether. Maybe speak with the brutes in the bar and try and stop him doing what he does. But none of it really seemed ideal. One day, Jane awoke to find the house ablaze in Nevada and his armor and weapons gone. This was what Jane had feared most. It wasn't clear if he'd fled or been kidnapped, but either way, he was gone. And from what he, uh, she had heard around town, he'd been drinking absinthe all night, speaking incoherently about the hamlet, the comet, strange blue lights before heading down the road and into the black of the night. Months had gone by, and it didn't seem like he would ever return. 
money was running short and Jane hadn't the connections or the skills to make money of her own honestly. When orphaned as a teen, she learned how to steal from the drunken thugs in the inn to pay her way and feed herself, but it had been years since those times, and she knew that it was the only way to make sure she didn't die on the streets. For a while, she picked pockets and trained herself some basic skills with a dagger, just in case things went south, but even this came to an end as both the patrons and the inn owners became wise to her tricks. She was down, to, uh, down on her luck and lost. This was until Nevada returned, but... He was different. He had a strange blue glow in his eyes and came back holding many artifacts, heirlooms, and crystals. Of course, he didn't expect Jane to still be alive, nor did he recognise the street dweller she had become. Jane knew this was the only time to get her revenge and also take some of the, her precious belongings for her, her own and make a hefty amount of coin. One night in the bar, Nevada and his old thug buddies were uh, back on the good old absinthe and out of their minds, him telling tales of his braveries into the un fighting the horrors of this world. Jane took it upon herself to add a little something to his next drink, and then left for the night. The next day, she awoke to the news around town that Nevada had died. Likely just too much booze, everyone thought. Nevada was buried that same day, and some of his wealth was distributed among the th thugs, but um, a lot of it was also buried with him as it was thought to be worthless. That very night, Jane took it upon herself to dig the grave and take what rightfully hers. She knew the others had the rest and she wanted it too, as well as a proper payback for turning her sweet Nevada into what it became by the end. She had amassed an amazing wealth of objects, trinkets, heirlooms, crystals, and all manner of other things on her quest for revenge. Some were easy to sell, but many others had no, uh, no use and nobody had heard of them nor wanted them. She went in search of people and traders looking for unusual items using her newfound uh, grave robbing skills to make quick cash as she moved from town to town. Jane met many unique and interesting people as she crossed the country, but still struggled to find anyone that was interested in what she was offering. Until one day, she stumbled across a man with a strange look in his eye and a need for both the artifacts she possessed and the skills she had acquired. Jane didn't question what the man wanted with the artifacts or whose grave she was robbing, when she saw the coin that was being offered, she just did what the man asked. This little arrangement went on for some time until one day she arrived to find the man's house burnt to ashes and no sign of him anywhere. Although she had made more than enough to get by, this left Jane feeling down and desperate as her work brought her great, a great feeling of purpose, something she'd never had before. In a search of greater purpose, she again began her quest to find someone in need of her skills, this is when she remembered a strange scientist she had met many years before on her search that was obsessed with death. It was a long shot, but she thought providing fresh bodies with various causes of death could be of some significant interest to her, as well as someone like herself was probably unwilling to fetch the, um, the bodies herself. The long journey back proved to be of significant value, as the woman uh, she had once met was not only inter uh, interested in her services, but ecstatic at the pro prospect of working with her. Another few months went by until her past finally caught up with her. Some bounty hunters she recognised from home came to her door. Immediately, she stabbed one of them in the neck with her trusted dagger and fled out the back. One more mercenary was waiting there for her, grabbed her, and bound her. It was a long while till she woke up on horseback, still tied up. She rolled off the horse, uh, the horse's back and cut herself loose with a blade hidden in her sleeve, then threw it at the driver and slit the throat of the second with his own blade. She was now alone in an unknown location, and only one thing in sight, a sign with a lantern hanging from it that read, Crossroads. With Jane, I really tried to uh, to build in quite a lot of her motivations for why she's here, um, and sort of why she knows some of the other characters, like you may recognise uh, Courtney from her character, as well as someone that we're going to meet down the line, someone that we're hopefully going to get to play as soon. Uh, but yeah, as, as I said, I wrote that backstory, and I'm, I'm quite happy with how it came together. I think um, it gives a good sense. I also managed to uh, work in Nevada, which is one of the characters from Darkest Dungeon 1, in case you don't remember. So I wanted to try and tie, tie one of the characters at least to something back from the other series. Next up, we have the Highwayman, and he is still, as he always will be, Dismas. And this is a backstory by Strafe. Oh, Dismas. Oh, Dismas. Where had he gone so horribly wrong in his life? He had been of decent wealth growing up, but that hadn't fulfilled him. Slight nagging always pulled at his mind. It's a bit more gold. They won't miss a few coins, it whispered. 
After his parents passed on, he'd been driven to a life of gambling and drink as a way to cope. How poor of an idea that had been. One late autumn night, drunk and on a bad streak, Dismas did something that would tear his very soul asunder. He found a small carriage on a cobbled road. Thinking of only his wealth, he shot twice into the carriage. If only he'd never done that. Laying inside, the corpses of a young mother and her child. Something that hit Dismas's emotions like a punch. He staggered, weak from the overwhelming sorrow. It, it shouldn't have been like this. He, he, never, he never meant to kill them. Afraid and alone, Dismas ran into the woods. From that day forward, he lived a life of crime. Every night, he saw that woman's face when he slept. And so Dismas thought about his sins as he walked on an old dirt road with a broken crusader in pursuit of redemption. Just absolutely fantastic writing. This is actually the same story that we used from the Darkest Dungeon 1 series, but Strafe just had such strong ideas about um, Dismas as a character and had built up so much of his backstory in that first series that it just made sense to continue on with Dismas's story rather than changing it to a new highwayman. So that is exactly what we've done. And yeah, again, amazing writing there by Strafe. And then we have the Man at Arms, Josiah, and this is by Friendly Shep. Josiah was born out of wedlock, with a father that wasn't his and wanted nothing to do with him, and a mother that couldn't care for him. He was cast out of his home when he was just five years old, forced to be taken into the orphanage that held an equal amount of hatred for children as his legitimate father. However, while he may have been a bastard child, weak child was not. As Josiah grew up, his naturally built stocky frame revealed itself, shaping him into a fine man. Once he was of age, Josiah left the orphanage and decided to join the military to support the nation he had come to respect. Josiah found his place on the battlefield, standing in the thick of chaos, protecting those counting on him as blows rained down. He re uh, reveled in the pain as he yelled out to his comrades to push on. One mission, however, turned out to be Josiah's last. Instead of a local uh, anarchist rebellion, he was sent to quell with his squad. He instead found an army of alien flesh creatures growing out of corpses and gaps in the ground. The entire squad was wiped out that mission, the ja Josiah the only survivor. Seeing those awful creatures tear apart a town, his squad, and then defile the corpses of already dead to join their rotting army changed something inside of Josiah. He now saw that he needed to protect the innocents, those who could not protect themselves. Glory and battle meant nothing if there was no one to fight for. He turned his sights to a local town seeking to join the local guard, when he noticed an interesting job speaking about a cursed estate and strange creatures. Seeing this poster, Josiah remembered his fallen comrades, all that he had lost, and the fires staring within him. Yet again, another just brilliant story here. Absolutely love it. Uh, the, the, this is our this is our starting crew. These our are our guys. These are the people that we're going to be with for a long time. And as you can see, we're going to be progressing and unlocking other characters as we go forward. Currently, there are only um, five unlockable characters, but we do have stories for those in preparation for when they join the crew, and they will then become part of the loop. So we're going to quickly go through and take a look. At some of the skills and abilities of who we have here. First of all, it's probably a good idea to take a look at our quirks. Um, we can see we've got Devout, committed to power beyond themselves, and weak grip, which is less crit. So that's actually not too bad for Courtney here. Um, Jane has on guard. She starts with extra dodge as well as um, speed. I believe that's dodge. We can take a look at that soon. Um, this game works differently to Darkest Dungeon 1 with how you apply uh, dodge and things. It's instead based on tokens. She also has Kleptomaniac. She's consumed by the urge to steal. That's not completely um, strange for someone such as Jane. Her, uh, her backstory, as you can tell, she's quite the... Uh, She's quite the thief, quite the pickpocket. She's done quite a lot of that sort of stuff in her past. It's kind of in her nature to use her thieving skills to get by in life. Next up, Dismas is again devout, uh, but also he is Asturias. Asturias? I'm not quite sure how that's pronounced, but he prefers the simple, simple life, which is also kind of interesting because, again, Dismas, as you probably heard from his backstory, probably does prefer a simple life. He's, he's, he's a troubled man. He has been tortured by his own actions and um, resulted in some gambling and drinking and it's really put him down the wrong path. And our man at arms again is devout. We have 
a lot of people being devout within this uh, within this group, which is very good. But he does start with, unfortunately, a sprint ankle, one of his uh, many wounds, one of many battle wounds. Painful, but ultimately the heartless swelling of the ankle. Unfortunately, minus 15 move resist. Unfortunate, but not too bad. We can actually take a little look at these guys' skills as well. Um, you actually start off with five skills with the ability to unlock more as you progress through your run. You can also upgrade skills to improve their effectiveness. It's a, a very good way of doing so, so we're definitely looking to doing that. Um, and yeah, man, I'm excited to get in uh, here. I think this setup that we've got here is pretty good, so we're going to drag... Tried. More devastating than the horrors of a hundred campaigns. Indeed. We're going to drag these guys in um, one by one. Harid, a fugitive seeking to outpace the past. There you go, Jane. And lastly, Courtney. that science stains the surgeon's hands. Indeed. Let's go ahead with the unusual suspects and jump into our first run of Darkest Dungeon 2. The Valley. So, the time for denial has passed. You must face your failures or be consumed by them. Indeed. So as you can imagine, the game does work similarly to how it did prior in terms of combat, but the in-between parts and how you build up your squad is very different. So we start off each run with the academic An stash, find. giving us some lovely stuff such as healing salves, uh, pouch of lie, uh, clearing corpses, and then some stuff. And then we basically got stuff like coach upgrades, um, in items, and combat items. We can kind of explain how they work and use them as we go forward. But we can start off here by uh, taking a look at our um, inventory. We have one trinket, plus 10 move resist. Considering um, our, our character here, Josiah, actually does have a sprained ankle, giving him more move resist to offset that would be very nice. So we'll do that to start off. Um, we can go over to Dismas here, and he can take um, a combat item. If we go over to our combat item slot here, we can give him the healing salves. Um, and then for Jane, she is good with corpses, so she can clear the corpses. Maybe we should give the salve actually to Courtney. I think Courtney would be more well-versed in the medical profession. It might make a little more sense for her to go forward with that. And the rest of these items here we can use as we uh, reach our first in. As I said, there is going to be tutorials here. I'm not going to be going through all of those currently just because... Um, I did that in my first episode, the edited stream episode, if you guys didn't see that from a while back. I on the steps of the university. A collegial handshake that would doom us both. And here is our first lot of the desperate few. Now, this is an interesting mechanic where essentially your party can decide in decisions to gain different benefits from random passers-by and random events that we may have come across, and it will actually affect their relationships with each other. Now, some of you may be wondering how exactly we plan to, um, how exactly we plan to work in the relationships that the forgotten. game builds. Um, now. Basically, we're going to use those as a basis for character interactions. Some of them, some of them may be either ignored or tweaked to fit the story better. For example, romantic relationships may be, um, may be treated more so as relationship building than actual romantic interest. Just to keep the, um, just to keep the narrative flowing and make sure we can progress into the next loop without that being a core mechanic of the two characters, as you, as you probably would imagine. Well, let's push forward. This will be our first fight here. Even your valley is not immune to the spreading stain. Oh, the, the animations and the, the models of this game are just impressive. This, this guy gets his first bite in, deals some stress damage. But we can, of course, go in with a thrown dagger or a pick to the face. We can see how much damage that's going to do. 10% chance to crit, 4 to 7 damage, 100% hit rate. I think we're going to go for that pick to the face, and we actually hit full damage on that, which is wonderful. And of course, we're starting off with our dodge tokens here. We can actually press G here to take a look at all of the uh, different icons. Um, as you can see here, this is dodge. 
50% chance to dodge the next attack. Rather than having a specific dodge stat, you can get different items, skills, and a, a bunch of different things that can give you tokens. And the tokens, basically, they are used one per turn. So uh, on her next turn, she can dodge an attack. She has a 50% chance to dodge it. Whether she dodges it or not, that will use up one of those tokens. And she currently has two. So that's an interesting way of setting that up. Um... So, okay, they, they've, they've changed some skills here. They've changed some skills. Um, I When I first played this, there was no... Um, there wasn't any uh, patches to the game, so they've definitely done some balancing changes since I first played it. So, when stress is 5 or higher, it reduces stress by 1. Um, instead, now, it would just um, add armor, which is um, the block, I believe. Let's just take a little look at that. Yeah, that would be 1 block. Uh, so I think we're just going to go with something like a crush and try and go for a kill. And as you saw there, the enemy actually had um, a death's blow. Enemies now have death's blow in this game. Uh, these ones don't. These ones are going to get hit in one. But some enemies will have death's blow resists. The same as characters did in Darkest Dungeon 1. And they still do in this game. You're going to have to deal with the fact that um, sometimes you'll hit an enemy when they're on zero health. And they'll survive it. That's just That's just how it is in this game. You gotta be, uh, you gotta be careful. You gotta just understand that some enemies have that death blow resist, and there is certain ways around that. As you can see, Dismas here has a skill, and in the bottom left there, we can see that it ignores twenty percent of his death blow resist, so we can use that to our advantage. But there's our first battle. Find. We gained a mastery token. We also gain a trinket, which is rather nice, and some currency to spend at the inn. So we probably want to. Um, Rest and we probably want to give that trinket you. to someone. So let's have a look at people's speed currently. Um, two speed, five speed, eight speed. So we probably want to give it to Josiah, actually. He can have plus one speed there. He's hoarding all the trinkets, but I think that's okay. Um, and there is the first in of our journey. Let's get to it. And here we can spend our well-end money as well as have a little rest and try and build relationships as well as use in items to de-stress. Lower your guard. Soften your gaze. The Dismas and Courtney became more friendly. Here. Josiah and Dismas became more friendly. We can continue. And this is our crew. So we start off with this. This is minus three stress. Um, unfortunately, we don't have anyone that's that stressed right now. But normally, it's not a great idea to, uh, to keep a hold of your items. So I'm just going to give this to him anyways. And then we have... Minus one stress, high chance um, for two targets, high chance of improving affinity, very small chance of harming. So we're going to go you and you. And that, that buffed both of their affinities for each other. Who wants a shot at the champ? And then we can actually go over to here and take a look. So first of all, we'll go to the Wainwright. Mindfulness. And this is vital the last hope. steel. So for the first one, I think we'll just keep the base name of The Last Hope. But as we progress forward through our cycles, you guys can give me suggestions for names. But anyways, we're going to jump this on. And this is going to add to the top there and give us plus four inventory slots, which is very useful. Learn what can be taught. And, and then, as you saw, just a little taller at the we, end. we did get a mastery token, which means that we can upgrade one skill of any of the characters. Now, before um, the patch... Ounce of Prevention was by far the way to go. Um, just because it um, improved... It, it was instant stress relief for the entire team. Um, it's actually going to be a good idea to take this anyways. Because basically when we're above 5 stress, it allows us to heal some stress. So I think Ounce of Prevention is still a great, great idea for us. It'll allow us to manage stress somewhat, but not keep it quite so low as you were able to prior. We can also reset these at any point and give them to different people if we want to change it up. Um, and then we can go to the provisioner Spend here. You can, or wealth no longer has meaning. We have 24 indeed relics. Did. And we can spend that on whatever we may like. Um, so we can go with a few of these. So I think I'm going to go with... Um, let's go with a few of these. And Are one of them. necessary. Acquisition. Yeah, so these, essentially, if we go over to now our characters, if we just go back to um, these guys here, we can then go and give these guys some uh, some items to work with. There you go. And Dismas, you can have the smoke bombs. I think they fit your personality nicely. He gets the dartboard for plus two crit next region as well, which is intriguing. Um, I like that. 
And then you get plus two crit next region as well. Awesome. Uh, and then we can actually go to select our route. And this Rain, is where things get interesting. Fire and rot. Is there no sanctuary from this madness? So, from each inn, we get to choose a route of where we want to go. We can go to the Tangle, the Sprawl, or the Sluice. The Tangle actually has a reward associated, as does the Sprawl. But they also could come with extended difficulty. They also have an interesting goal. Win at least three resistance encounters. Visit at least three assistance encounters. So I think we'll start off by going to the Sprawl, just because we get more mastery points. The inventory upgrade is nice, but the Sprawl seems a little more rewarding. Although, I do believe it is harder. And you, we will notice as well, we'll probably end up dying fairly quickly on our first, uh, our first cycle. Just because the game is going to be a little more brutal to us and we're not going to have as much unlocked. Another but let's uh, city. go forward Another and inferno of mutilation embark. And madness. Embark upon our journey. By the way, I will try to avoid speaking over the uh, voiceover guy because he is just incredible but um sometimes i may sometimes i will it's, it's just gonna be what it is anyways let's embark and go on our first journey out with dismas josiah jane and courtney the sprawl here we are behold the great cities of so Man. as you can see Ruined. we actually have and a very flame. interesting new mechanic in the sort of slay the spire style of um, of choosing your route. And essentially here, as you can see, you get different encounters. They can be uh, yellow or, um, or blue. And blue is going to end up stressing out your guys and maybe harming the relationships. Yellow is basically them saying that they want this. And they'll actually make comments about where they want to go next. And you can see... We've got some lines here which are yellow or green, should I say? I don't really know what you'd call that color. And some lines that are fragmented blue. Essentially, fragmented blue means that we don't know what lies among that path. But the yellow means that it's either been scouted or we know that it's safe. So our goal was to visit at least three assistance, assistance encounters so we can get one right here, a second right here, and a third right here. So we're going to do exactly that. So we'll first go to the right here. We can control our cart and pull it to the right. And this should should make our guys relatively happy. It at least didn't give them any additional stress. You may also see these little rubble piles along the road. We can run into those with our horse and carriage um, in order to... Oh, we should gain some stress there, actually. Um, in order to maybe get some loot. There's some small bits of loot you can get from that. Anyways, progress forward to our first assistance, uh, assistance encounter. And this is, yet again, another desperate few. But this time, the implications will be slightly different than the first. Here we can see that we'd gain some torchlight, um, as well as some mixed loot. Here we'd lose some torchlight, but gain food and mixed loot. And here we would lose torchlight and gain a relic loot. I think our best option is unfortunately to harm the relationship between Jane and Dismas and go for torchlight, as this is one of the main ways Abandoned of gaining torchlight. And we actually got now. two really good stuff. Whittling tools for uh, stress reduction is going to be really, really nice. And as you can see there, this is part of the Infinity um, system. So we can actually update ourselves on the relationships. As you can see here, this is what tallies our relationships. Staying at low stress and helping each other will improve their relationship. But um, you can also harm the relationship by not healing people when you should. Or um, stealing kills if they're high stressed, things like that. Can, uh, result in some different Walls ways of relationships desperate. falling apart. They need your help. Let's push forward to the next resistance encounter. This is likely going to be um, slightly relationship ruining for some characters, but this should give us a lot of light and loot to work with going forward. I really like the idea of building up as much light as we can as early as possible because. Sometimes it can get a little horrible, and light in this game is much more deadly than it used to be. If you get to below 40 light, enemies get some significant benefits. Um, so this one, this is the best I can do. This one, D Dismas, is just giving away some of his stuff and isn't willing to give up much more, so he isn't actually going to be giving anything, and it's going to upset everyone. Um, Courtney's going to uh, get some food reward and gain some flame. I've seen no negative consequences should we assist. Jane says... First one in the mud buys the first round. That's going to be a mixed quirk, flame, and food reward. 
And that's the same for Josiah as well. Physical labor can relieve our worries for a while. I, I believe Josiah's correct here. Let's go with that. We actually did unfortunately gain world, a negative quirk world, rather than positive. We can actually take a look at that now. Um, he gained weak grip, which is actually the same one that uh, Courtney is afflicted with. Although I will say that Courtney um, isn't as negatively affected um, as we would be with Josiah here because he actually is hitting things, doing melee know, damage, all that problem. sort of stuff. So this is what I meant about uh, the decisions. This way is unknown and the team isn't really that invested. You can see that Dismas here actually calls out that he wants to go to the resistance encounter. So that is exactly what we'll do. And that did indeed stress heal him. Chaos must be met with unwavering resolve. As I said, when we progress forward in this series, I won't have to explain this sort of stuff as much. I just thought I wanted to, in the first episode, to make sure that everyone that's new to the game, new to the series, and anyone else that's just on board with what we're doing and why we're doing it. Anyways, we move forward to our first resistance encounter, the burning pile. And we move forward. So, if we move quickly, we can avoid any trouble. So we could actually just get out of here and not fight anything. Not every fight is our fight. That's another escape. Um, and here we would gain um, a debuff. Enemies would gain a debuff and blight resistance. Okay, it's actually um, a good idea to get out of here. And I actually think that we will. Dismas, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to Courtney, but Dismas is correct. We don't need to fight that battle. We do not need to fight that battle today. Um, and then here we can actually see that, that we want two want question mark and Dismas wants to help. I think we're going to go for another resistance encounter because this will be our third one and complete our objective. It does um, unfortunately stress out Courtney and Josiah. And you, as you can see, Courtney is feeling feeling rather bad about uh, about herself right now. It's like a nightmare out there. You sold us to go this way, Dismas. Make up your mind, sir. We go for another resistance encounter here. And then we're on the path to trouble. And we'll, we'll likely find some random encounters within those areas. So that's kind of one of the big downsides of going through unknown areas. You end up finding some random encounters. You must be strong enough to shoulder more than your share of the burden. So here we've got minus light, double flu food loot, and mixed loot. We've got extra light and food loot. And we've got minus relic loot plus uh light plus food honestly this is a very good offer again i'm sorry courtney but we can uh we can actually trade a few of what we have josiah's got the best idea in mind to gain some extensive torchlight food and some good loot here i think this will be very helpful for us in this world wealth is and it very much was purpose. healing salves are probably one of the most valuable combat items that you can take on um, let's take a little look if you can actually hold any more. I think three might be the max. Okay, four's the max. Okay. So we can actually, um, go across to... So I think, I think we, we ought to give two people the healing selves. Just because they're so very useful. Um, and then we also have the chalk dust here, um, to remove, uh, like, hidden or what, what, invisible, whatever you call it. Burn self here, we can cure a target and heal slightly. And here we can cure blindness with the milk soaked linen. Intriguing. That was definitely worthwhile, even if we did lose some loot of our own. Now we head forward. Um, and with our light, we've actually managed to um, to scout somewhat ahead here. So we might be okay. And we actually have a watchtower that reveals the paths ahead of it. It's going to be very, very nice for our team here. We shall push forward like rats and trap. But Courtney's really stressing out right now. Courtney is not having a good time, but to be fair, people have been disagreeing with her pretty much the whole way forward. And here is our first random encounter. Now, random encounters are different to normal battles. Um, instead of having a, instead of just going until you die or they die, they actually do have a round limit. Meaning that um, if we reach five rounds without us dying or them dying, then it's just over. We just escape. So we could aim to, to run out the clock or... We could try and kill them. Obviously, if we kill them, we are going to get some extra loot. These guys are relatively tanky. Um, I'm just trying to have a little look, see what would be best here. I think with the 16% chance to crit, we want to go for this. And again, the, the animations and sprites of this game are just incredible. I won't even call it sprites. It's more art, isn't it? We did get knocked back there, but we resisted. And unfortunately, we lost the dodge token without actually dodging any damage there, which is 
unfortunate to say the least. I think I'm going to smirk bomb on you. Unfortunately, he did resist it. Uh, we can actually take a look and see that this guy has a 20% debuff resist. So that was relatively unlucky. Um, we'll go with a wicked slice here and get a beautiful crit. Beautiful crit. Okay, so ounce of prevention won't actually give us any stress reduction yet because it's not five or above. Um, we could go with the blinding gas here to uh, try and blind this guy. Or we could go with Blight. I mean, they, they, they have very low Blight resistance, so I think Blight's probably the best way forward here, as you can see there. Blight works the same as it did in the previous game. We are taking some hefty damage here, but don't worry about that so far. Um, these guys actually can bleed pretty easily too, so I think we, uh, we apply the bleed to you as well. A heavy bleed and Blight on this man here. Um, and you don't need to do this because we could try and run out the clock, but I, w I do want at least one of these guys dead because they're dealing quite a lot of damage. Um, we can actually hit you, so let's try and get this guy dead. Ah, animation, the mace dragging spiked ball along the floor. There's the pummel, but there's that dodge. That is exactly what we've been looking for here, really. Accelerant. So this guy has buffed himself for apply on hit, one flame, as well as plus one speed. The wicked slice comes in. This guy's going down very quickly here. Um, I'm going to hold the line here. That's going to pull us forward immobilizers and give us one block for 50% reduced damage on the next hit. I think that's good. Um, you're going to take enough to kill you on the next round. Not quite enough, actually. Let's go with this, because then, then the next uh, bleed blight should kill you, I think. And we'll put some blinding gas on you. Unfortunately, resist again. The resists have been strong on this enemy team so far. Another pummel comes in. Oh, he, he does survive with just one hit remaining, which unfortunately allows us to take yet another hit and as you see death's door this guy didn't die he is still on death's door but he does get reduced damage while on death's door and reduced speed as well Ooh, we are taking some heavy hits right now as well as some heavy stress okay we'll do this to try and get a death's blow unfortunately no death's blow there and there you go. There's the death blow. As well as setting up that repost, and the immobilize stops us from being pushed forward. Now, you may be thinking, hey, Turtle, your health is very low, and you have very little um, very little in regards to healing. But we actually should be okay here. We can use Battlefield Medic here. That will remove that fire. Actually give us a nice bit of, uh, a bit of friendship between Courtney and Jane here. Um, and yeah, we can use that to, to heal. And also, Nina herself, Nina, sorry, I'm thinking of the uh, other um, Grave Robber, Jane, sorry, does have Absinthe to allow her to heal herself up a little bit, which is very nice. We're just going to have to keep progressing forward here. We are in round four now. It's unlikely we're going to kill this guy, but we can try our hardest. Especially not when we're... Um... Oh, we're actually, we weren't quite below 25%, so instead we just got the buffs, which isn't what we wanted really but it works we'll go for another heal on you yeah that was a bit of a shame but it does give her the dodges which i think is important when she's at such low hp yeah it looks unlikely we're going to kill this guy before the end of the next round but as i said we'll try our best unfortunately our repost has been okay i was gonna say useless until now but there you go we get another hit pulls us forward and here's round five the final round we got to go all out here. The pick to the face. Yeah, I, I just... It doesn't seem likely here at all. No oh, my water. lord. Not only did we apply that burn, but we got brought down to very low HP here. But that crit... This could be it. Oh, no. He death stored. We could have we got him there, but he death stored. That dodge is very useful. Thank you. We are going to have to Battlefield Medic here rather than go for the last bit of damage. It's, of course, going to give us a nice relationship bonus again, but it is going to end this fight, unfortunately, without loot. Just one hit away. I, we tried our hardest, but you may be wondering, hey, Turtle, you're, you're now leaving this bit of combat with incredibly low HP of your characters without the ability to heal them. But actually, as you'll see from our HP as we travel, we do gain small amounts of HP per distance traveled. So we are going to slowly but surely regain Everywhere. that HP, so do not worry. In all directions. 
Destruction has claimed dominion. And there we go. We get a nice bit of uh, get a nice bit of vision forward here. So this is a little tricky. We basically need to see how much we heal between this and the resistance encounter. We definitely want to go for this one here. We will heal up slowly, but it depends on how much. It doesn't always mean that you heal back to full. You just heal a bit here and there. We're probably going to have to use our healing salves as we go forward into this next fight. And actually, I think... Um, I think we can now give you this here to cure one bit of burn, which provi uh, proved to be a little uh, little bit of annoyance in that last fight. We're taking some significant burn damage. Well, here we are again. Again, remember, we could escape, but a lot, a lot of... I'm pretty sure, yeah. Unfortunately, at this time, everyone wants to fight. Together, we will defeat them with purpose, and formulas need battle testing. I think Courtney's uh, line is the most impressive there, so we'll go ahead with Courtney here. So, ounce of prevention, it is going to give us some uh, some resist to uh, to fire. So I actually think I actually think it's a good idea to start off with ounce of prevention. We can rely only upon each other. And then we're going to go for blight here. I think we're going to stack up the blight again. We'll go for a post there. That guy didn't take any damage from that. That was strange. There's that repost coming in clutch. And we actually get combo as well. Combo's interesting. It's not going to apply to any of the skills we have right now. But certain skills, especially upgraded skills, do additional damage on combos. For example, Jane's skills I have the ability of doing 50% crit on a combo target. Which is really, really nice. Um, I kind of want to hold the line. Yeah, I'm going to hold the line here. Only three damage, but... But this time... This is an unending battle. We we have to we go until we die or they die. So it isn't quite so forgiving this time. And of course, Dismas is very near to death's door already. These enemies are pretty tough. But as I said, we do have healing salve to uh, to save ourselves. We can actually go ahead use some, some of that on Dismas there, and that is just repaired part of their broken relationship. As you can clearly see, relationships are important in this game. Building them is um, is going to give you some great benefits, as well as um, just making sure that your characters don't stress each other out or misbehave, because that can happen and will happen if you uh, if you don't pay attention to the relationships your characters have. Uh, we're going to keep on healing here. I think Courtney is going to be our main healer for a while. Kind of interesting, considering we no longer have a Vestal. That was a big hit. We no longer have a Vessel. Instead, our main heal is a Plague Doctor, as opposed to DD1. It's interesting. Okay, so we have two characters on a stress of four. Unfortunately, burnt now as well. And, now, and we are burnt test and on Death's Door. This is where things get tricky. So we definitely want to go with another healing cell here. Oh, uh, unfortunately, um, Josiah there was a little upset that he wasn't the one to be healed. But I have to admit, Josiah, I think Dismas did need it more. A slow dissection. An unavoidable end. Let's try and proc that on you. There you go. We did add that. Plus two chances to miss for 50%. I think that's really good. We'll go for another hit on you. He does have weakened from being put to the ground. Here we'll go for a heal. More healing salve. We definitely need that right now. And Battlefield Medic. That's also going to heal you up a bit. And as you can see, with the healing salves in tow, we're actually not too bad. That's another crit for 15. These guys are hurting us badly. I think now is probably the time to go for a bolster. That's going to cure some of that stress off of us. It's also going to give us some of that defense. And nicely he missed. That's what we need. Wow, they really don't like Dismas, do they? They really don't like Dismas. Luckily that defense helped a lot. 
We are going to have to be careful here, though. We are unfortunately out of healing selves on Jane here, which makes things more difficult, certainly. We do get a Death's Blow here. Another pummel coming in. Everyone's on fire at the minute. We have a healing cell for you. And you're on 10 HP, you're on 13, so we'll give that to you. Help, impeccably timed. Again, oh, another crit on Dismas. Oh my lord, they hate him. They just hate him. We can bring him back from the brink there. We shall not lose you. Not today. Definitely noticing that this area is quite dangerous. Quite dangerous indeed. I'm having a hard time staying alive here. And stress is uh, stress is building too. That's another thing that we're, that we're having to worry about now. Stress has gotten to the point of being quite egregious. Four, four, two, five. We're going to leave that for now. Just give you some more blight. Again, that animation is just perfection itself. We go for a slice. Unfortunately, that week was lasting a while from being put on death's door. Once again, he's hit to death's door and burnt. This guy has been taken... I was just about to say has been taken out, but the death's door saved him. By just a hair. We get another death's door check. We're getting lucky. We're getting lucky. At any moment, a hit could kill. And we're out of battlefield medic as well. Dragged back from the brink. Another healing salve. We are very near to uh, out of healing salves here. That's this has been dangerous. But there you go. We get the death blow. We finish All you off. Have their solutions. We gain one mastery Even token. The big ones. And we gain some healing selves back. Thank goodness for that. That would be very bad if we didn't. The loathing festers. Let's first of all go back over to Courtney and give you... Actually, we can give you the healing selves. There you go. Um, you can have that. And you can have... Probably the clear old corpses there. Oh boy, that was... Um, that was tricky. Very tricky. I'm going to take a risk here and move right. Because people want healing. People need healing, should I say. This must get a bit of stress relief knowing that we're heading to a medic. We may find another... Um, another roadside battle here. Indeed we have. They are very likely among these unknown roads. We can just hope for the best. So we actually got some brigands here. And someone that looks like an antiquarian. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. We want to be taking these guys out as quickly as possible. Let's go with the blight. Start that off. Dismas, you've been taking some hard hits recently. Let's defend you. Oh, no. Our relationship. There you go. Set up the repost. Very important here. And that defense comes in handy. Begins. We can go for healing on... I think we go for healing on Dismas. And we actually got a crit. Very nice. That's another hit. And here comes the stress. Ounce prevention next turn will be very useful. Definitely very useful. We are getting very stressed out now. The ounce of prevention change, by the way. I'm very glad they did it. But before ounce of prevention gave you minus one stress whenever it was used, and it could be spammed so easily to just get constant stress relief. Empowered. Emboldened. A very good change to that. Unfortunately not killing this guy yet, but Blight could finish him. We're taking enemies out one by one very much so at the minute. And it is working out. There's the death blow strike with that critical. Nice one, Josiah. And unfortunately, a stun coming out there loses our next action. That is unfortunate. I'm going to give you the healing salve here. I think you need it, especially while you're defending. 
And we'll go for a crit. Nice one, Jane. Well done. And we finish off with another Death's Blow coming from Josiah. He knows how to finish a target. He really does. A little help, impeccably timed. Indeed. And there you go. We're actually... We're actually near to a relationship um, test. Like a, like when you hit 10 stress, you get like a relationship uh, tested at um, Steady yourself. those pips when they fill, either good or bad. We'll go and throw that on you. Nice blight in the back line. A nice heal as well as a bleed. You may be wondering as well why I'm not just healing people all the time. If we take a look at this skill, we can only heal people when they're below 50% of their maximum HP. Prevents you from basically topping up healing too often. One thing you'll notice about this game as well is death's doors are, are quite common, but actual death's blows are not. You don't get hit to death's blow quite as often as you did in Darkest Dungeon 1, which is very nice considering... Once you lose a member, things start to get really difficult. So trying to keep them around is, uh, of course, of the of the utmost importance. The final round. Can we finish off both of these in one round? I doubt it, but we sure as hell can try. That's a good start. Maybe stress relief though first. Empowered, emboldened. There we go, we got them on the last round as well. Beautiful. And that's going to give us another mastery find. token. And we can push forward to the medic center. Here we are. Hopefully this can provide us with some nice stuff. We can pay here to heal up our members. Plus 11 HP on max. So, we only have 14 relics, so it's quite expensive. We can also use this to remove quirks, although that is quite expensive. Um, we can also buy things like Laudanum, which is much better than it was before. Um, cures minus one stress. So that's good. Unfortunately, no healing salves within the shop here, though. So, I think we, uh, we probably just go for a, a heal across the board here. Um, go with... Let's go with plus seven, plus seven, plus eight. And unfortunately, we don't have enough for that. Only two remain, but there you go. Nice little triage there. Something that we desperately needed. And now we push forward onto a cultist encounter. Something that um, could be bad. We, we, we shall see. We shall see how that goes. push forward. Our team is, is looking a little rough right now, especially in the stress department, but they've been fighting through. But their first venture into this cruel, cruel world, they're not doing too po too poorly. Oblivion's ingress. Whatever they are, we'll cut them down. Don't forget your fundamentals, however strange the fur. Let's be gone before they know we were here. Formulas need battle testing. Okay, so we'd, if we did this, we would have to dim our light somewhat. I think I am going to do that. I know that it ruins our relationship, or at least it harms our relationship between Jane and the rest of the crew. And Jane is probably being quite selfish in her actions here, but I believe it's necessary. Okay, these two want to go Hero Shrine. Ah, uh, okay. This is difficult. So hero shrines are interesting. Essentially, it lets you unlock skills we for future runs, moving. Um, which is obviously very useful. And we do have two. Okay, we have two in a row. We have to go for it. I'm sorry that some of you will, will find this harmful, but we have to go for this, especially considering it's Courtney and Josiah that are at the highest level of stress right now. It's unfortunate. But two hero shrines back to back is something I can't turn my nose up at right now. Even if it does come at the price of a battle. One moment. Okay, let's go for it. So we'll start off with a repost here. Uh, I think this should actually be a relatively possible encounter based on the foes that we have uh, in front of us here. I'm going to try and take out the, the, the back line first here. 
Uh, we definitely want to be going without some ounce of prevention here. Our stress levels are a little higher than they should be. I'm hoping we don't gain any additional stress throughout this uh, combat experience. We only lose stress. We're going to do this to get some more stress healed. And my god. Blister shot on a crit. That's going to give us some stress, isn't it? Yep. Gives both of us some stress. One thing is that's interesting as well about relationships. As people become closer friends, when their friends get hurt, it it mentally hurts them. If a friend goes to death's door, then, then they can take a stress hit because of that. We're going for the kill here, so let's just go with a Noxious Blast. And I think that put him down to 4 HP, right? Yeah, so he dies next turn. We've actually done very well here so far. That's a Death's Blow. You should die to Blight on the next turn, I hope. And then this guy, he's been a bit tricky, but we can we can handle. There's the Death's Blow from Blight. You'll love to see it. And we have actually managed to manage our stress somewhat. Unfortunately, it is building slowly but surely on these characters. There's the pick to the face. Thank you, Jane. And the wicked slide from Dismas as well. Still, that I can't. I, I'm gonna keep saying it. The animations are just brilliant. More blight coming in. We're gonna bolster once more, just to get rid of some of that stress. And there you go. He dies to the blight anyways. That was a very, very Abandoned smooth battle. Forgot. It is ours now. Indeed, abandoned or forgotten, it is ours now. Now, this episode may be a little bit longer than I first intended, because we're going to try and get to the um, unknown reward to end off this episode. But either way, uh, I'm hoping you guys are enjoying and accepting nonetheless. But we have the Shrine of Reflection, and we can actually pick a character um, here for who we want to go to the Shrine of Reflection. Essentially, this will let us unlock one of the other skills the characters have, and it, I, I believe it unlocks one at random. So I'm going to go ahead and unlock one for Josiah to begin with, I think. Man at Arms. Chapter 1. A premature promotion. So you may be thinking, do these stories tie in to the backstories that we wrote for the characters? And I will say, yes, somewhat. There may be some small contradictions, but for the most part, each one of us did take a look at these prior to writing our characters and stick at least somewhat on theme, as well as these backstories in-game being somewhat general anyways. So we'll go forward with this one. The politics of a military career are perhaps as treacherous as war itself. Though untested in combat, his acumen for advancement was unmatched. Through a dubious campaign of influence and intimidation, he had at last claimed a coveted command and was eager to bask in the glory of the victories that were sure to come. There you go. And this unlocked Bellow for us. This is going to remove, repurse, and reduce speed, which is incredibly useful. Incredibly useful. I, I will definitely utilize that skill. We can, in fact, go and change that out now. So I think uh, currently I'll probably take off um, something like Rampart um, and go with Bellow instead, because I think that'll be more useful throughout our campaign. Nice one, Josiah. And then we have another hero shrine to go to to uh, get another skill. And these are permanent. These these are something that we will keep throughout the game. So this is one of the small pieces of information that the characters will keep with them from cycle to cycle, which is interesting. I, I really like the, the way that this series is going to build upon that idea. Go forward into our next one, next hero shrine here. By confronting the past, we learn to face the future. So this time, I think I'm going to go with our Plague Doctor, Courtney, and see what she has. Plague Doctor. Chapter 1. The Good Student. Go forward with this. Brilliant and bold, her unconventional theories 
created nothing short of a scandal in her fourth year. The mocking whispers and scornful glares of her peers and professors had an ironically invigorating effect on her extracurricular experiments. The mysteries of the human body, of life and death itself, hovered just above her scalpel's reach. If only she could acquire a corpse of sufficient freshness. <laughs> and that's where uh, Jane came into the equation, providing that service. And here we get the Emboldening Vapors, which is going to give the target plus one to the damage. Uh, plus one to, I think it's like plus 50% attack damage, so we can actually take a look at that as well. And yeah, Emboldening Vapors. So we can actually go and take off, for now we can take off Incision and go with the Vapors. I think that's going to be a good idea. And let's press forward. Um, and here we have our Guardian. The inn is in reach, perhaps a last grasp for riches. This will be our last fight among this area. You're an important part of our little band. The relationship strengthens between our characters. And here we are. Emptiness and dissolution have wormed their way into the world. Oblivion's rampart. Let's try this out. We're going to have to fight this one. Round one. We did actually get healed to full here. I'm not sure if that was prior to combat or not. Um, these guys do have relatively high blight resist, so let's not bother with that. Um, yeah, let's take you out first. This guy has dodge, so I don't want to go for him quite yet. Eyes closed. We resisted, but we did gain stress. Our stress is... is Getting slightly out of hand. I want to do Alcid Pretend Prevention for the Stress Relief, Empowered. but I also just want to do it generally because I think it's going to be very useful to have um, those resists buffed up. Slash coming in with more bleed. And the whip has been cracked. We'll, of course, set up a repose for the Duelist Advance. We could, of course, bolster as well, but I think we wait until someone else is above five stress to do that. Um, Bellow's going to remove the speed. None of these guys have repost currently, but I think it's really good to reduce their speed anyways for three turns. We're taking out one enemy at a time here, as you can probably see. I think that's kind of the best way to go forward, and with a death blow already, that puts us in a very good position. Ooh, Ignite. It healed him, but he was already at full health, so that doesn't make me worry too much. What does make me worry, however, is bleed and blight uh, and, and flame on one character, I have to say. Hmm. Let's hold the line here. We are definitely going to have to go for that on you, otherwise you're going to take a lot of damage. at last. Eyes closed. Unfortunately, we take some blinding there. Oh, this is this is definitely going to be a hard bit of combat here. Blade Tornado. The slow suffering begins. Constantly applying himself with some extra dodge. A little help, impeccably timed. But I needed that. You didn't, the Courtney. You're at full HP. Don't lie. Get rid of that dodge. I'm not sure what this thing does, but it's got very high block. Stress here is 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 very high. We'll bolster here to try and reduce that a little bit and give some block. Maybe not the best strategy ever, but it's what we have to play with right now. Get that repost built up. Hmm. It's kind of difficult. I think we go with that and heal you up to full. Or near to full, at least. I'm going to try the Noxious Blast. We actually got a crit, so if we... Yeah, I'm going to say if the Blight lands, that guy's dead. Still, this guy is confusing me. I'm a bit scared. 
The, the, the speed debuff has been very, very useful here. A slow Clearly. Oh, God. Oof. This is rough. We're about to get a stress check here on Josiah. Unfortunately, sir. He's gotta go. One less obstacle in our path. But these guys should go down quickly. I'm not exactly sure what this bat guy even does. He just keeps doing this eyes closed move. But we're resisting it from time to time, which is helpful. Definitely. No more bolstering, unfortunately. Time and a miss. Is directed. A new sun. A ah! <laughs> we found out what that guy does. Unfortunately, a meltdown ruins relationships. Now I know next time to make sure that we uh, we deal with that enemy early. Because if you don't, you're in a bad spot. A brilliant conclusion. This guy should be pretty easy to clean up. But our stress got tested in a way I was not expecting there. We can advance to the next round or we can escape. I think currently we're going to have to escape. Find. We, we are not in a position to move forward on that with the current stress levels of our uh, crew. We will go to the inn, end off this episode and push forward to the next. This episode, of course, is going to end up being longer than most episodes. I'll try and keep most under an hour, but this one will be longer just due to the fairly long introductions of the characters. I hope you guys do not mind. Uh, but we'll push forward to the first inn here. And this is where we shall spend the night getting ready for our next course of our adventure. A worse for wear, but familiar nonetheless. We gained quite a lot of quirks here. Um, and we got Dismas and Cartley became more unfriendly. Ooh, Josiah. We got, we got some very bad relationships brewing here. We gained Last Gasp. Um, when under 50% HP, gain 4 speed. We got Bad uh, Digestion. 30% chance that food has no benefit. Bloodthirsty. Um, giving us uh, extra crit and damage when low on health. Intriguing. Intriguing. And then here we've got our mastery. Okay, so first of all, let's give that to you for minus three stress. That to you for minus three stress. Heal up a little bit. Gonna debuff our, our um, resistances a little bit, but yeah, there you go. Um, right, let's quickly just check out our provision screen. Fare, but fairly priced. Yeah, we'll buy all of those definitely. Can't really buy much else. Although we could buy some trinkets here. That's 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 what the uh, the baubles are for. So, ooh, that's a really good trinket. Um, although that's even better. I'm gonna buy that. And then I'm going to give that to, um, have a little look-see. Learn what can be taught, that you may stand just a little taller at and the Give end. that to, I think I'm going to give it to my Plague Doctor. Having her start first sounds incredible. Okay, then we can take a look at this, give you the healing salves back. Give you that. We can go over. We don't have anything Your to put on our stagecoach. We have five mastery tokens to play around with, so let's uh, let's do exactly that. We can't upgrade things twice. <clears throat> Heal for twenty five percent. We probably want to go for some damage dealing capabilities here. Um, this would increase its damage potential, its crit potential. And give 50% extra crit when target is comboed. Um, intriguing. This would gain, give more blight and deal more damage. I think we'll start off with Dismas and upgrade his stuff. So I think Wicked Slice is a great one to go for here. As well as um, Duelist Advance. 
Them two are just great skills all around. Um, Bello is going to remove... Ooh, yes, we definitely go for Bello because it's minus five speed. That's awesome. And then I think we maybe go for... Ah, Crush isn't that good when upgraded, actually. So I think we go for an upgrade on Picks the Face here. And... Let's go with an upgrade on Throwing Dagger as well, maybe. Um, what does that do? Speed. Act faster next round. Oh, okay. Actually, no. Let's go for that. Let's go for that. Okay. I think that's a really good setup for our next turn. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this first episode of Darkest Dungeon 2. I thank all of you for um, joining in on this series that have wrote character backstories and will be writing Dire Interest in the future. If anyone else wants to get involved, please let me know in the comments and I can add you on the Discord to a special channel where you can get involved with the writing part of this series. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next one. You were right to fear the world. It has gone mad.